You are loose. What have you been doing? You've been stretching this whole time you've been here, haven't you? No. It looks <laughs> awesome. So often, the grandest achievements are won on the smallest of scales and far from the limelight. They are realized moment by moment, step by step, in a deliberative process. The extra repetition, the one last effort made at the brink of exhaustion, when focus and determination overcome even the most powerful of obstacles. Forward, keep up tall, up tall, up tall, reach, 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 push, push. Try not to lean your body, I'm gonna stop you. Less than two years ago, few people who saw Jamal Williams would have ever thought they would see this. At the time, he could not move. He could not speak. Yet there is no miracle at work here, no drug to wash away the paralysis of body and speech. There is, however, faith, determination, innovation, and recovery. At 28 years old, Jamal suffered a massive stroke that was the result of a rare virus that attacked his heart. The former Virginia Union linebacker was paralyzed on the right side of his body and left unable to speak. Gradual, like, um, like I was tired, mostly tired, and, um, and um, um, I got a sick, feeling um, about me. In the middle of the night, they called and told me, he says, your son has had a stroke. And I s thought I was dreaming. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, because it was the middle of the night and I was asleep and they woke me up. I thought it was a dream, a very bad dream, <laughs> but I did think it was a dream. And then when I realized that it wasn't a dream, I still, the realization did not hit until I got to the hospital that morning and saw him and he was totally incapacitated. And I had to just keep the faith and I had to be strong because when a 30 year old has a stroke, it's difficult for them. And as his mother, if I'm hysterical and crying, and that's not gonna help him. So I, my tears were when I was alone. Then Jamal and Daisy found the renewing spirit of sheltering arms. Squeeze it, squeeze it. Turn that elbow, straight, that elbow, push, push, get that shoulder out. Elbow straight, elbow straight. It's all on you, you got all the movement. I have been, or do you want to do initiated first just to feel it again? Yeah. Jamal's extraordinary progress from the time of his paralysis has been accelerated by a new wave of technology that has revolutionized the effort to help stroke patients regain some or all of their independence. This is the Rio a robotic device that utilizes constant repetition, which essentially re-teaches the brain to transmit Jamal's mental effort into a physical one. Jamal can see his progress on a screen, while his therapist, Natalie Smick, guides him through the process. The purpose of the machine is that it increases the repetition of how much arm movement you're doing. That way they're relearning the movement, getting more information to the brain about that affected side. I'm getting more return. Putting the ball between these two. Jamal also utilizes the Sabo Flex, a device that allows stroke patients to strengthen wrists, hands, and fingers to regain basic functionality. So we got him one for home use, and he has been working on it. He's increased how much movement he has in his shoulder and his elbow. Uh, the things that he can do now, he's now using it to open the refrigerator door, turn on and off lights, carry plates. Yeah. <laughs> you know, things like that. Strong handshake. The device makes me move my hands. The Rio and the Sabo Flex are perfect illustrations of how Sheltering Arms combines innovation and technology with our number one value. <laughs> patient care. Life challenges, but then you come here and you see these people who are just pushing and pushing and pushing through and trying to get better and stronger and it's just your, your worries and cares go away because you're just so excited to be with them. Since 1889, Sheltering Arms has been helping patients of all ages with compassionate care 
healing their bodies, and transforming their lives. The success of our mission is unmistakable. At each one of our 10 locations, Sheltering Arms does an exceptional job of giving patients the power to overcome their disabilities. This is the result of a deeply embedded philosophy that ensures every patient will get the treatment they need and deserve. Sheltering Arms grows themselves, so naturally they're going to get better and better and better in what their services, which will improve and help, for me, my son. <laughs> the therapist sticks by you every single day, every single moment of the day. And um, that's an instrument to your, to your ability to be, get better. Squeeze, come on, squeeze, keep squeezing. Indeed, Jamal's story is a family story. Sheltering Arms encourages families to be present during therapies. And in so many ways, the therapists here cannot help but become an extension of each patient's family. He had a lot of people around him that would help him and care for him and, you know, do things. So I knew that, you know, looking at him, you always knew that no matter what you told him to do, he would do it twice as much as you told him. They not only worked with the equipment and the supplies that was open for Jamal, but they gave him that personal relationship, the confidence in, in him that they're gonna be by his side, they'll be by his side, and that he could do whatever he needed to do by just continuing to try. And that was the most important steps, initial steps for him. That confidence, combined with technology, with family, with faith, and finally with Jamal Williams' powerful determination, have broken down obstacles that were impossible to overcome just a few years ago. He's taught me a lot, and I'm his mom. And the pride that I have, the fact that he, he's fought very, very hard. I'm getting better so I can have a future. Jamal Williams, one of the many people who have found the power to overcome at Sheltering Arms.